Welcome to the Solid KM University channel. This video's topic is creating a program off of a 2D sketch. So oftentimes we'll receive prints from our customers or our suppliers and it is simply just a 2D sketch of the three-dimensional part. That could be a DXF file, a DWG, or maybe even a sketch inside of SolidWorks. So this video is uh, basically how you would use just the 2D sketch to program your part. Um, and this is unique in that uh, sometimes you'll get a part where you can actually model up inside SOLIDWORKS to get solid and then you're programming off of it like you normally would. The attempt here is what if you wanted to just do it right from the 2D sketch? So I'll show you how you could do that. Save a couple of steps in terms of the design. So we'll start from opening up a DXF file. So I'm just going to go to File, Open. And we can see down here all files. I'm just going to filter all the files in this list to just the DXF file. So DXF format, I'm about to open that up. As soon as I click open, SOLIDWORKS recognizes that it's a DXF file, which is really just a, a print or a two-dimensional sketch file. And it asks me what I would like to do with that. Now SOLIDWORKS has the ability to actually import that into a SOLIDWORKS drawing, um, which is not useful for us here. We wanna program off of a geometry. So we wanna actually do this as import new 2D sketch. Okay, so I'll just click next. And this file format would have different layers on it. Say it came from like an AutoCAD file or something like that. Um, there's no layers here, so I don't have to do anything here. So I'll just click next again. And there's nothing I really need to import here either. So I'm just gonna go to finish. And it takes that sketch and places it into a sketch in a SOLIDWORKS model. So I'm just gonna exit out of that sketch and we need to save that somewhere. So I'm just gonna do a save as, and we'll just call this sketch part. Okay, so now that we've converted it from the DXF, it is literally just a SOLIDWORKS file. I can work with this just like I would with any other file. So I'll go to Tools, Solid Cam, New, Milling. <clears throat> and to a point, you're gonna program this almost the exact same way you would with a solid file. We've got some geometry, we're gonna open up a external only, I'll just click OK on that, closes that file, opens up my design model of it, which is our perfect copy. I'll choose my post like I normally would. And this is where this gets a little different than what you would do with a, um, a solid file. Let's get a, uh, a perpendicular view of the sketch. So when I go to coordinate systems, I don't have a face that I can select on. So there's really nothing here I can use to, uh, to create my coordinate system using select face. So my options here are to use define, or by three points. Um, I have some lines here, so I'm gonna use define. So I'll just go to define, and I have three selections I have to make. The first is the origin. In this case, I'm gonna choose this center point right here as the origin. And then I need to choose my X direction. So I have the option of choosing either a point or a line. I'm just gonna choose this line here to represent the positive X direction. And now the last selection is the Y direction, positive Y direction. Now, if I had a line, I could choose the line, but I don't really have any uh, perpendicular lines there. So really all I'm gonna do is choose a point in the positive Y direction, and it places the positive Y direction perpendicular to where the X direction was. According to the right-hand rule, as soon as we have the X and the Y, we have our Z. I'll click on the green check mark there. Now we have a coordinate system. Um, we usually skip over this, this section because it's driven by the solid, but because I don't have a solid here, I can tell it what my levels are. So in this case, my part upper level, um, say I had a print off screen or print on my desk, I could say, okay, well the thickness of let's say um, from this face of the part to the top of these bosses is half inch. So I can say part upper level is half inch. Part lower level, from zero, I can say it's probably negative half inch. And then from there, I can put my, my clearance levels there. So this is no longer automatic when you're working with the 2D sketch. You go and plug in the values. Click on the green check mark there. There's our Mac 1, position 1. And I didn't mention, but you could use the delta options as well to shift it around. Let's say I'm not using that center hole right there as my, as my origin. I actually want it to be somewhere in the top corner. If I knew how far from the, the features represented by the sketch, my origin should be, I could use the delta boxes to move that around. Okay, so um, at minimum, this is all we need to begin programming. But I wanna go one step further. Even though we don't have any solids on screen, I might still want to verify my code. I still wanna use solid verify or any other of the uh, simulation modes from SolidCam. So I'm gonna create a stock. 
And again, from this 2D sketch, we'll create a stock. Once again, let me just get a perpendicular view right there. And we'll go into stock. So again, these options here, we don't have anything here we can really use except for box. And normally we use relative to model, but again, we don't have a model here. So I'm gonna switch this to absolute coordinates and you'll see that it places the stock there um, based off of just these coordinates here. And just off screen, I have my dimensions of my stock from that origin. So I'll start typing them in. So 3.5 minus 4.5. And you can see the green sketch is representing the size of the stock. So we'll go minus two. And then in Z, we said half inch up and a half inch down. All right, so if I angle this, we'll see that the green rep represents my stock. So I've created a 3D object solely based off these coordinates. And I'm gonna probably wanna use that later, so I'll click on Add Box to CAD Model. So it's the same sort of stuff you would normally do with relative to model. Here, we're just typing in the actual dimensions of the stock. So click on the green check mark. There is no target to click on, so I'll leave that as is. And under iMachining, just as always, we'll choose our machine and our material. So click on the green check mark, and we can begin programming. So uh, let's go ahead and choose, we'll do a 2D eye machining. And all we have is lines and arcs, but that's all eye machining needs. Just the outside edge of the stock, we'll set that to open. And instead of an edge, we have these lines. So let's use those lines. So I'll click on that line there. Now, because this imported as the sketch geometry, all these lines came in as is. There's really nothing here that defines an edge. So the fact that if this was a prismatic part, this cir circular edge right here would probably be the circular edge of the actual part. And if this was a solid, we would have some sort of vertical line representing the edge of that tangency. But because we're looking at this from 2D, this line meets in the middle of that curve. So I could actually go in there and maybe modify the sketch geometry a little bit, maybe break that line right at that point and have some kind of nice arc I can click on. But I'm not gonna do that here because the purpose is to use what we have and just to get programming, save a lot of steps. So I'm gonna use the options down here that are not usually represented in our video. So I'm gonna actually show you how we can use some chain options here as well. So I'm gonna use arc by points. So what that does is, I already have that one point highlighted. I'm gonna choose another point along the curve. Let's say, hopefully the apex right there, so that red dot, and then the final arc right there. And you'll see that I've created a sketch. It's a temporary sketch, but it's, in, it's coincident with that arc there. So I've got what I needed. Again, we have the same situation over here. This one line doesn't break at that curve. So I'll go to point to point, and from that point that's currently highlighted to this point right here, we create another imaginary line. These lines become the geometry. I'll switch back to curve, click on that next curve right there, and the rest of those should be okay. So I'll use my option up here of just going to next. And I need to click on curve. And it doesn't recognize anything here because we're using 2D geometry, ah, actually my mistake. This is a complete circle. Once again, the same situation we had over there. So I'll use arc by points. So again, that highlighted line right there, I'm going to try and choose the apex of the curve and that point right there. So again, we get a, uh, a coincident curve. Now I'll switch back to curve, click on this guy right here, and we'll just click on these guys as we go along. And there it is. So we've got the outside edge of the stock. We've got the outside edge of the part like we normally do. And the rest of this is just a simple 2D I machining. So I'll just add my half inch end mill. Levels, okay. So levels, again, this is a three dimensional parameter we need to choose. I could type it in or because I've created my stock, I'll just click on that line right there. And then pocket depth, same thing. 
But if not, as always, I could have typed in the numbers right there. And we'll just set up the rest of this I machining. And there it is. We've created a 2.5D toolpath to the I machining based off of just the sketch. And we can do the same thing with the bosses on the top. So let me just open this up. We'll do a save and copy. Let me turn off that toolpath. And let's go back to the geometry, and we'll set up the geometry to machine out these top bosses here. So um, as my outside geometry, we're going to basically do the same thing again. And again, we're doing it like this simply because we're using sketch geometry that um, doesn't have any defined edges. This may have come from a DXF or a DWG file. Maybe this is just the actual print that is uh, a one-to-one -one scale. So all of this is um, exactly the size of the part. The time I'm taking to do these extra little bits of arc by points and all that, you can imagine that I would be trying to do that, that, that the time I'm taking to do all that is pretty much the same time I would take to turn this into a solid that, um, that helps me out later on when I try to do programming. So it's, kind of, it's the kind of thing that you, um, you pick and choose where you want to, uh, to use up your time. Let's go to constant Z propagation. All right. And with constant Z propagation, I should be able to choose that one, that one. And that represents a slot that cuts into there. So we're not going to do that one. These are only the bosses. So green check mark. In this case, the levels. Levels only go down to that right there. Do the save and calculate. And there's our 2DI machining right there. OK, so one last one we're going to do. We'll do a save and copy. Geometry, and I'm just going to do this final slot right here. Okay, and this time I'm not even going to choose anything. I'm just going to say zero to a half inch depth. And we've got our 2D I machining doing that slot. So, all of that, real quick, no need for a solid here. I've got the 2D geometry that it represents my part. This is pure 2.5D programming. The 2D is the 2D sketch, and the half is just the, the Z parameter that I put in there for my depth. If I go to simulate, I can simulate this using HostCAD. I can see where the toolpath is going and all that. But if I want to actually see the material being removed, that's why I added my stock definition, because that's really the only solid that I needed for this aspect right here. So just as always, we've got a solid verify of our toolpath. Okay, so pretty simple. So anytime you've got two-dimensional geometry, you don't necessarily always have to turn it into a solid. If it's something prismatic like this, you're easy enough to go. So any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Yeah, any questions or you'd like to send us your parts, you can submit a ticket using the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos in the series of videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.